Huh, so you consider yourself a hacker after using some hacking tools or maybe installing Kali Linux on your PC, but do you even know how the internet works or how you're able to watch this video independent of where you might be in the world? Well if you don't, you should, and you're in the right place. Today, we'll cover everything from how computers connect to each other and share information, to what basic network terminologies like an IP address or ports really are, and how the internet basically works, so let's get started. Okay so in order for you to understand how the internet works, you first need to know what this is, it's a small networking device called a switch, that allows multiple devices or hosts in a small area like a home or office to connect to each other and share information. So if device 1 wants to send a picture to device 3 here, it can do so by first sending the picture to the switch, and the switch then forwarding the picture to device 3. But how will the switch know that the picture was intended for device 3 and not for all these other devices? Well this is because when device 1 sent the picture to device 3, it attached a special address with the picture to let the switch know that the message was intended for device 3. This special address is called a MAC address, and it is basically a unique identification number assigned to a device by its manufacturer, in order to connect to a network. You can find them written somewhere on the device or by accessing the settings app and navigating to properties. Now the scenario that I just described is of a compact network, often referred to as a local area network or LAN, which usually consists of a group of devices connected together in a small area like a home or office. But what if we consider another local area network here, and now device 3 wants to send a message to device 4 on this other network? How will it do that? Well this is where a router comes into play. A router basically connects two local area networks together, by assigning something called an IP address to each device in the network. But before we get into how it does this, and what IP addresses basically are, let me get one big idea across to you real quick. And the big idea is that the internet is basically just a complex network of all these bunch of routers and switches connected together around the world, and sharing information. Now if we get into the details, it's obviously a bit more complicated than that, but just for your understanding, you can think of the internet at its core like this. So basically how you're watching this YouTube video looks something like this. This is you. This is your switch that is connecting all of the devices in your home by their MAC addresses, and this is your router that is connecting all of your devices to the internet, aka a network of routers all around the world. So when you typed youtube.com on your web browser, or opened up the YouTube app, your router connected you to the YouTube's web server, which is a computer that is hosting YouTube services for people to access. Now you might be thinking, wait, I don't have all these switches and routers at my home, all I have is a Wi-Fi. Well yes, but you see, your Wi-Fi broadband has a switch and a router integrated into it that is performing all of these operations. A company or a big office building might have different switches and routers as they need to implement networks on a large scale of computers, but a home or a small office can work with a small device that has a switch and a router integrated into it. Anyways let's look at how all of this is happening behind the scenes. So as I mentioned earlier that when a router is connected to a switch, it assigns IP addresses to all the devices that are connected with the switch. Now how it does this is through a protocol known as DHCP or the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, and these IP addresses are basically private as they are only used for identification within the local network, and are not accessible from outside the network or over the internet. But if these IPs are not accessible over the internet, then how are all the devices in homes and offices connected to the internet? Well this is because the router they're connected to basically has a public IP address that is shared with all the devices within the network, and is accessible over the internet. This is why if you check your IP address address by opening a command prompt on your PC, or by going to the settings app on your phone, you will see a different IP address than what you would see if you searched for your IP on Google. The one you'll see on Google is the public IP address of your router, that is provided by your internet service provider and is unique in the whole world. So when we're talking about obfuscating IP addresses to hide our location, we're talking about the public IP address of our router that it shares with all of the devices in our network. But why do we share one IP address across all of our devices? Why can't every device in our network have a unique IP address that is accessible over the internet? Well this is because we basically ran out of IP addresses to give to billions of devices across the internet, and this is the solution we came up with. Instead of giving every device in a home or office a unique IP address, we gave their routers a unique IP instead. Now as a side note, this solution also came to an end, and we encountered another shortage of IP addresses, but we'll discuss this topic in the upcoming videos. For now just know that due to this shortage, a new kind of IP addresses were developed, called IPv6 addresses, and they look something like this. These IPs are now mostly used by cell phone carriers, and if you turn on your mobile data to check your IP, you likely see an IPv6 address. Anyways coming back to the topic, so basically when you searched for youtube.com on your web browser, your browser first contacted a DNS server to convert the website name into a unique IP address associated with the YouTube YouTube's web server. Once the IP address was obtained, your browser then sent an HTTP request to the web server that associated with the IP address. How this happened was first the request was sent to your network switch along with your MAC address. When the switch couldn't find the destination within the local network, if YouTube's web server is hosted somewhere on the internet, the request was then forwarded to the router. The router then checked the destination IP address and used a protocol called a network address translation or NAT to convert the private IP address of your device to the public IP address of the router. 
Once the IP address was converted, the router then used its routing table to determine the best path for the request to reach YouTube's web server, and once the best path for the data to travel had been determined, the router then sent the request to YouTube's web server on a specific port that handles HTTP requests. Now to understand what ports are, you can think of an IP address as the primary address of a building, and a port as a sub-address or apartment number of the building. While an IP address will get you to the right building or the right machine, a port will take you to the correct apartment or the correct service you are looking for. Each port on a computer is assigned a specific number, and it ensures that multiple programs on a computer can send and receive data, without all of them getting mixed up. Anyways once the YouTube web server replied with a response back to your router, your router sent the response back to you. Now this was just a high level view of how you're able to watch this YouTube video independent of where you are in the world, but if you're still curious about learning more and exploring how this magic happens in the form of pixels that you can see on your screen, you can search the internet for what is a TCP slash IP model and how it works to get your concepts crystal clear. Anyway guys so this was it for the video, now if you would like to scan your home network and get a hands on experience of all these things that we went over, I would highly recommend checking out this video where I cover a popular cybersecurity tool called Nmap that is used by hackers and pen testers to scan and gather information about a network. In the next part of this video, we'll dive deeper and take a look at different networking models, so stay tuned for that.